Has this ever happened to you? You're sound asleep, only to be woken up by a chirping sound. You know that sound. It's a smoke alarm with a low battery. Covering your head with the pillow is just not gonna cut it. Time to get up and figure out which one needs attention. The hunt begins. You go from smoke alarm to smoke alarm, listening for the next chirp, hoping to pinpoint the culprit. Wouldn't it be great if there were a simple way to show you which one needed the quick fix? Luckily, this doesn't need to be a situation you have to deal with on a network. You can get important information on devices with Link Layer Discovery Protocol for Media Endpoint Devices, also known as LLDP MED Extension Configuration. It can be configured on your Cisco business switch. This protocol facilitates communication with all the devices in your network. Data is collected from each device. This data includes information that identifies and locates devices, including phones, on your network. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain how to configure Link Layer Discovery Protocol for media endpoint devices. When configured on your switch, LLDP can identify, locate, and show information about devices in your network. If you have a problem with a device, you can see its status and location. So if needed, you can go and work on it directly. LLDP can be used in networks with both Cisco and non-Cisco devices, as long as they all support LLDP. Now that you know the benefits, I'll dig a little deeper into LLDP. LLDP is a neighbor discovery protocol used by network devices to advertise information about themselves to other devices on the network. The protocol runs over the data link layer, which is how two systems running different network layer protocols learn about each other. LLDP allows the switch to advertise its identification, configuration, and capabilities to neighboring devices that store the data in a management information base. LLDP uses a set of attributes to find and identify neighboring devices. The attributes include type, length, and value descriptions. These are called TLVs for short. Okay, now that you know some details about LLDP, I'll explain LLDP MED extension. MED is an extension on LLDP that operates between endpoint devices, such as IP phones and other network devices like switches. Specifically, it provides support for voice over internet protocol or VOIP applications. MED also provides additional TLVs for capability discovery, network policy, power over ethernet, and inventory management. And now that you know the basics, I'll show you how to configure these LLDP MED extensions on your Cisco business switch. Log into the switch using your username and password. Change the display mode from basic to advanced. Open the VLAN management page to see the VLANs on your switch. Here, under VLAN settings, you can see the two VLANs on my CBS350 switch. VLAN 1 is the default, and VLAN 50 is designed for VOIP. Scroll down the page, and under the Voice VLAN section, select Properties. Under the Operational Status of VLAN 50, check the settings for COS 802.1p, which stands for Class of Service. It shows it's configured as 5 for the voice application. Here, DSCP, which stands for Differentiated Services Code Point, is set to 46. After checking the settings of your VLAN, in my case VLAN 50, navigate to the Administration menu, select Discovery-LLDP, and open the Properties page. This is how to check the properties of the LLDP and make sure it's turned on. On this page, make sure that the LLDP status is enabled. This page is used to set the general LLDP parameters, like enabling the features globally and setting timers. Next, navigate to the LLDP MED Network Policy page, where you can configure settings for real-time applications, including voice and video. A couple of points here going forward. If a network policy is configured, it can be included in the outgoing LLDP packets to attached LLDP media endpoint device. The media endpoint device must send its traffic as specified in the network policy it receives. 
If the LLDP MED network policy for voice application is checked, it means you can't manually configure these settings as they are set automatically. If it is configured how you want, then click the apply button. In this case, I want to define the policy manually, so I'll uncheck this auto box. The first step to define a new policy is to click the plus icon, which then displays this new window labeled Add LLDP MED Network Policy. Select the network policy as one, since it's the first policy you're setting up. Pick Voice from the application dropdown menu and then enter the VLAN ID. This is where the traffic needs to be sent. In this case, I'll enter 50, as this VLAN is defined as a voice VLAN on this switch. Select Tagged for the VLAN type, which again is for voice traffic. User priority or traffic priority is the class of service value to define next. In this case, I'll choose five for the voice application. The next setting is DSCP value, which is what associates with any application data sent by the neighboring devices in the network. This setting tells the neighbors how to mark the application traffic sent to the device. Here, I'll select 46 as I'm using a voice application. At this point, the settings are finished. Click on the apply button here to save the settings to the running configuration file. You should see a message on the screen that tells you this new network policy was saved successfully. Just a note here, the interfaces need to be configured manually to include the defined network policies for the outgoing LLDP packets using the LLDP MED port settings. The next step is to open the LLDP MED port settings page so that I can configure the LLDP MED TLVs. If the LLDP MED network policy for the voice application is set to auto and the auto voice VLAN 50 is in operation, the device automatically generates an LLDP MED network policy for the voice application for all the LLDP ports. Check out the information on this page. The user-defined network policy shows that there are two types of traffic defined here. Active stands for the type of active traffic on the port. Application means the traffic type for these defined policies and location is where the TLVs are transmitted. Here, PoE, which stands for Power Over Ethernet, indicates if the PoE-PSC TLV is transmitted. Finally, Inventory shows if the inventory TLV is transmitted. The message on the top of the page here shows if the settings are in manual or auto mode. And right now, this page is in manual mode. To change this, click on the LLDP MED network policy link to open that page. Here, you can select the auto checkbox and set it to auto mode. While in manual mode, you can set up and configure additional LLDP MED TLVs and one or more user-defined LLDP MED network policies to a port. Click to select the port and then click on the edit button. This page shows all the settings that are available for this port. The interface name in this case is GE1. The LLDP MED status is enabled. Right now, the SMMP notification is not selected, but if you wanted to send SMMP notifications on a per port basis when an MED supported end is discovered, click here to enable it. The next step is to select the optional TLVs from the ones shown on the left side of this box. In this case, I'll keep the network policy that's already here. For the available network policies, select one, voice, and then click the right arrow in the middle to move it to the selected network policies box on the right side. There are three fields at the bottom of the page here. In each field, you need to enter the data in hexadecimal characters. These are defined by LLDP MED standards. Each field needs the following information. Location coordinate. Enter the coordinate location to be published by LLDP. Location civic address. Enter the civic address to be published by LLDP. And finally, the location ECS ELIN, which stands for Emergency Call Service and Emergency Location Identification Number that will be published by the LLDP. By default, the location is not configured but you can still enter it in hexadecimal format like this. Today, I'm gonna to leave these fields as they are and then click the apply button again. 
This will save the LLDP MAD port settings to the running configuration file. You should see the success notification message at the top of the screen. This time, it also gives a reminder to save the configuration. One more check. It all looks good. Close this page and then look at the LLDP port status page to see the global information for every port on the switch. One of the things to see here is the LLDP MED status for each switch and if it's been enabled. Don't forget to click on the save icon at the top of the page to save these new settings. So there you have it. This is how you can view, set up, and configure the LLDP MED extension on your Cisco business switch. Such a great way to keep current information on your devices, especially when there is a problem that needs to be addressed. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.